Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's have a devotion. We're in Matthew chapter 9. Here's verse 14. Then John's disciples came to him saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests be sad while the groom is with them? The time will come when the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. Now tomorrow we'll go on to what he says next, but let's zoom in on this. First, let's talk about the question that's asked by John's disciples. So in our, uh, our sermon yesterday, uh, we see you know, God's power to forgive, where Jesus makes this proclamation, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And now in verse 14, John's disciples, the disciples of John the Baptist, asked this question. So Jesus had his 12 disciples. John the Baptist had disciples too. And the disciples of John the Baptist asked this question. The disciples of John the Baptist would come up and ask Jesus questions on more than one occasion. The disciples of John, John the Baptist would often even ask John the Baptist questions about Jesus. They would say like, oh, Jesus, Jesus is over there baptizing. And John the Baptist tells his disciples, that's good. I must decrease, he must increase. Like, he must become greater, I must become, become less. This is what I came to do. And then when John the Baptist is in prison, it's the disciples of John the Baptist that come to Jesus and ask this question on John the Baptist's behalf. Now, this question is unique because they're looking at themselves and the Pharisees and Jesus' disciples. The Pharisees fast a lot. John the Baptist's disciples fast a lot. But no one seems to have ever observed the disciples of Jesus fasting. The fact that these disciples of John the Baptist knew about the Pharisees fasting is quite telling. Think back to our series earlier on when we get to Matthew and, and uh, uh, in, the, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus begins to right away just hammer at the self-righteousness of the Pharisees. He gives instructions on how to fast and it's in the context of not letting your works of righteousness be seen by others. You don't give to the poor in a way that everybody can see. Right? That's why you, my skeptical friend, will never know just how much Christians do for the poor. Right? Uh, there have been, for example, there have been men from uh, the Redemption Church to go and feed the homeless every Saturday for the last year and a half. But you don't know that because they don't post selfies of themselves while they do it. They just do it because they love Jesus. But the Pharisees always posted a selfie. They, when they gave to a GoFundMe campaign, they made sure their name was on it every single time. Not just because they're trying to get their Facebook friends to give too, but because they want everybody to know how much they gave and that they gave. Moreover, when they would fast, they would put on sackcloth and ash and they would, they would wail and they would make this big deal about it. But Jesus said, no, wash your face. Like, don't put on a big show. Your fasting is not to get praise from men. It's not to get shares on Instagram. That's what you get out of it. That's all you're getting out of it. Rather, let your father who sees what is done in secret reward you. And so even the selflessness of giving to the poor, of praying, of fasting. There's a bit of a selfish motive in it in that we do want to be rewarded, but we want to be rewarded in the eternal sense that matters all the more, not through selfish motives in the earthly sense. So these Pharisees would make a huge deal out of it every time they fasted. The whole zip code seemed to know the Pharisees are fasting again. We know because they're talking about how much they're fasting. <laughs> John the Baptist's disciples knew when they fasted because, well, they fasted. But no one knew about the disciples fasting. This serves two, this, this could point to two things. One, it could be that they just never fasted. Two, they may have fasted and not told anybody because that's how Jesus said you fast, right? And Jesus didn't give away the fact that they had fasted. Man, it was so funny. You should have seen how much time we spent as the Redemption Church on the wording of the social media post to answer questions about a corporate fast. <laughs> because People wanted to fast at roughly the same time frame, but we couldn't be legalistic about it. But we also couldn't give away the fact and make too much of a big deal about the fact that we were fasting. It was so hard. It was such a balancing act. The, the disciples of Jesus very well may have fasted and nobody knew about it. The Pharisees didn't know about it. The disciples of John the Baptist didn't know about it. But it also could be that they just didn't fast because Jesus' answer, say, answer is, look, there's going to come a time for fasting. All right? he, he equates it to a wedding. Uh, all right, at the bachelor party, there's no fasting, okay? The bachelors are happy to be with the groom, but then the time will come when the groom's taken away from them, and then they will fast. That's what he says in verse 15. 
So they're going to fast, but it's going to be when I'm taken away from them. By the way, this seemed to go right over the, uh, the disciples' heads, Jesus' disciples' heads. He would talk about the fact that he was going to be taken away from them, and it never seemed to register. It never seemed to click. He was talking about the crucifixion long before the crucifixion took place. He told them about it overtly on numerous occasions, and yet when the, the crucifixion happened, they're all just, well, I'm utterly baffled, and no one said a word about this to me. He's talking about it here in his response to the question about fasting. Can the wedding guests be sad while the groom was with them? The time will come when the groom will be taken away from them. Okay, see Acts chapter 1 in the Ascension. See, for that matter, the passions of the Gospels, the crucifixion. Then they will fast. So Judas, actually one of the disciples, would lead this horde of Roman troops, and they would come uh, along with Jewish authorities, and they would arrest Jesus. And Jesus was physically taken away from the disciples. There would be reason to fast later. For now, however, it's time to rejoice. He's just with them. Right? He was with them. They were eating and they were drinking together and they were, they were partying because Jesus was with them. It wasn't time yet. It wasn't time yet for fasting. So it's remarkable to me that the Pharisees fast are, com are common knowledge or public knowledge. And then the, it's also remarkable to me that it never, seemed, it never seemed like the disciples of Jesus actually fasted. In fact, they get in trouble by the Pharisees for picking heads of grain on the Sabbath. <laughs> They're even eating when they shouldn't be. They're, they're doing work when they shouldn't be. And so Jesus' response is, is quite beautiful. You can fall into this trap pretty easily. Imagine that you are brand new to Christianity. Okay, you're a brand new believer. And you learn about the Redemption Church, where, man, they preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they go through the Bible together. That's pretty cool. But then there's this other church where they talk about the gospel, but they also don't eat meat. You're like, wow, that seems like a more intense church. They're obviously more disciplined than these people at the Redemption Church. They literally get together and eat pork, and a lot of it. <laughs> Clearly, that's the better church. Not only do they, do, they not, do they not eat meat, but they don't drink caffeine. Not only do they not eat meat and not drink caffeine, they abstain from petting puppies. Whoa, the non-puppy petter church obviously is more disciplined, more rigorous, and more holy. Because, I mean, given the choice between, you know, having a cup of coffee and a plate of pulled pork while petting a puppy, and then choosing not to do that, obviously it takes more discipline. So, to the uninformed eye, the untrained mind, right, the, to, the, to the ear that is deaf to biblical teaching, Legalism makes you look more righteous, and uninformed new believers can get suckered into that so easily. It's part of what actually makes Mormonism attractive to people who are ignorant of Scripture. They're like, well, clearly the guys that are walking around knocking on doors and never drinking caffeine and wearing a weird underwear are more holy because what they're doing is more difficult. Guess what, man? God never asked you to abstain from pork, all right? In fact, he makes it clear in Acts 15 that that's very much on the menu now. And he rebukes Peter for his constant shifting back into legalism. God never asked you to abstain from caffeine. He certainly never told you to wear this weird underwear. right? Who, who holds the controlling interest in that industry? That's a brilliant move. Man, cults are profitable. God never asked you to abstain from that stuff. God never made that big of a deal out of this stuff. right? God, God never adds on these instructions. We're given one command in the whole New Testament. That's it. Stay with us to learn more. Or go back and watch our Gospel of John series for more on that one. It, it, it would seem to the uninformed eye like Jesus' disciples were less righteous than the Pharisees and even less righteous than the disciples of John. But they had freedom in Christ and they were with Christ. The day would come for their fasting. In fact, every one of those guys would die a brutal death. But for this time, in this moment, in Matthew chapter 9, it was time to feast. It was time to be with Jesus. The disciples of John the Baptist were prone to the same thing that's, that still exists today, looking at something that seems less disciplined and thinking of it as less righteous, looking at something that doesn't go above and beyond in virtue signal with legalism and make, it make you think maybe they're less righteous. No, they're actually more righteous. <laughs> because they're not condescending to others by doing something that God never prescribed. Do you see the critical difference there? Your abstinence from caffeine does not offset your past sins. 
Your abstinence from things that God never forbade does not make you more righteous. In fact, the pride you have in your heart as you condescend to the very disciples of Jesus is sin in itself. So watch out for legalism. Watch out for the pride of legalism. Moreover, you don't know, you don't know how often these people give to the poor or the way that they pray or how often they fast because they don't make a big public show of it. The disciples of John the Baptist have an interesting perspective, and this is not the last time we're going to see them in the gospel narrative.